What is your horror story from DNA tests like 23 and May? My grandfather did not die when my dad was four like we always thought. Instead, he faked his death, walked 1,500 kilometers to the other end of the country, married a 16-old girl and had seven more children. All the while leaving my grandmother to bring up the six children he had with her and his two children from an earlier marriage. Worst part was that he used the same names for the second batch of kids as his first lot had something similar. My grandfather was always told that his grandfather died in the war. DNA matched me with some distant cousins who all descended from a man with the same date of birth, job and birthplace but different surname. After years of digging, it turns out he had five wives, divorcing none of them. He had about three sons called John from different marriages, a couple of Williams, a couple of Marys. He died in 1949 and I actually managed to get in touch with who I believe is the only person alive to have met him. I got a very sharp response telling me how awful he was and to never mention his name again. Must have been quite the man to leave an impression that strong for over half a century. Not me but my co-worker found out his bio dad was not who he thought he was. Turns out he is one of the many many children of fertility doctor Donald Klein. There's a Netflix doc about him if you've never heard about him. My parents and I all did DNA tests and I managed their profiles theirs were done before mine was available. They each got a panic message from a woman on the other side of the world who had matched as their daughter. She was distraught, thinking her parents had lied to her for her entire life. When I logged into my account, it showed that I had no DNA matches with my parents which I knew to be wrong, plus the fact my mum was a young child when this woman was born made it clear the company had swapped our results. Customer service just said, oh well, and offered a new test. My family found it funny but that poor woman who had spent several days freaking out thinking her life was a lie before I got her messages and responded. My mom's generation has been really big into tracing our family tree. Turns out grandpa had two families, that we know of, that lived down the street from each other. If that wasn't enough to discourage my family from uncovering skeletons, a few years later one of my cousins took a 23andMe test to find out that our maternal grandfather is also her dad's skeptical smiley face. Edit. For those asking, the cousin in question is the daughter of my mother's sister. So we're thinking some downright unholy things went on. Unclear as my grandfather and aunt are both dead now. Grew up pretty normal for the most part, divorced parents but happy life. Wanted to know how my ancestry since I don't know past my paternal great-grandmother's maiden name. Got the results this past Christmas Eve. Found a half-sister, along with two other half-siblings, that is too old to be my dad's, he'd have been a literal child, and put two and two together and it turns out my dad is not my father. Can't ask my mom, she's dead. My bio-father is dead and no one knows anything and the people I have told, no one on my dad's side, too scared to break that news, are shocked. I know nothing about this man but his name and his mom's name, who is also gone, I believe. I just find out this big old bombshell so suddenly and then hit a dead end just as quickly. It was an interesting and juicy Christmas for sure. I'm 55% Swiss though which is random as hell. Well, it's not my asterisk horror story. But, police arrested the guy who murdered my mother, decades ago, because someone in the killer's family used one of those tests. The submitted DNA allowed them to get a match on a grandparent. And a couple of years later, when they subpoenaed his DNA to corroborate their other police work, he confessed. It took 40 years, but I imagine this is a hell of a horror story for him. He wasn't ever a suspect before the DNA match. About three years ago, I took a 23 and May test because I always had suspected, or maybe hoped, that my sister's dad was also my dad. He was in my life from the beginning because my bio dad was a piece of work. Well he isn't my father, and neither is the man who I grew up believing was my dad. My sister-in-law did some digging and found my real biological father. He's the one who reached out, did a DNA test, wanted to meet me and my children and introduce me to my siblings. For a while I held off because it was such a shock and I felt like it was moving really quickly. Four months after we had first started talking, we met and I was welcomed with open arms by everyone. And even though it was still a little weird and I was super nervous, I am glad I took the chance to meet him. 
He died from COVID complications just eight months after we found out he was my real dad. My cousin trying to scam the government claiming minuscule percentage Native Americans submitted a sample. What did happen was four children he fathered with four women other than current wives found him. Found out, doing the ancestry DNA, that my paternal grandmother cheated on her husband with her, also married, family doctor. My dad has brothers and a sister that he never knew about. Dad says that the doctor must have known. He looks exactly like his brothers, and the doc used to always call him, son, during his appointments. His dad, that raised him, also must have known, cause he treated him like crap, and made backhanded comments that, knowing what we know now, tell us he knew. Or suspected at the very least. One of my best friends called me one day in a panic. She did one with her father for fun. He is not her father. Turns out mummy has many skeletons in the closet. Bio dad never knew she existed and was so happy to find her. We now doubt her sister's father is her father. Just a gigantic domino effect of not good. Man poor dad. The one who raised her, I mean. Shitty mom though. I'm always morbidly enthralled in these types of stories. Someone in my grandparents' generation gave up a baby for adoption 60 years ago and our family still doesn't know, won't admit who it was. She only joined 23 and me because her daughters encouraged her to find out more about her birth family for health reasons. We now have family members who won't take the test. Stuff like this was surprisingly common back then, they'd either give the baby away, or the parents would raise them as a new sibling with a massive age gap. My father is from a country that is literally split in half. Half the country is ethnically Greek and the other half is ethnically Turkish. There is a long history of bad blood and our capital is split down the middle. We are culturally Greek but thanks to my brother's impulse decision DNA test, we learned that we are ethnically more Turkish. Not really a horror story, but goes to show how stupid war is. Ah yes, my husband's family is Cypriot, came to Australia in the 50s. We were never allowed to mention to his year year that her favorite Greek cake shop had closed and we now got her cakes from a Turkish shop instead, and we definitely could not point out that her own mother was half Turkish. Found out my dad isn't my biological father. My dad's sister gave me a DNA test for the holidays. I ended up taking it and discovered I wasn't related to my aunt, aka not related to my dad. But I have 10 plus half siblings with whoever my sperm donor dad is. They gaslit me for months saying the results were inaccurate, called me a liar to my sister, all this garbage. Then finally admitted it was true after six plus months of lying. We now have a terrible relationship. My sister found out that half our mom's side of the family are products of incest. Up and until, a few great aunts and uncles. I've got two. My friend knew that she was the result of a sperm donor. She signed up for 23 and May and ended up finding that she has a half-sister. Then another. And another. And another. Asterisk. I think she is up to over two dozen now. And almost all of them are half-sisters, and they all look so much alike. They have tracked down the biological father, and I guess he donated sperm in multiple states over the course of some years. He wasn't intentionally trying to have dozens of kids out there, but the rules of capping out didn't really catch him because of moving states. The other one is more direct. One of my family members got tested and found a cousin. But that cousin had a single mother, born out in California, we live in the Midwest, and nobody has any idea who their father is. Probably one of my uncles that passed away, or something along those lines. Based on my family history, everybody cheating on everybody, tons of babies in high school, kids not knowing that their fathers are not their real fathers, or kids being raised by the grandparents when their sister is really their mom, I refuse to sign up. I just don't want to know, it would just stir up crap. Ignorance is bliss. The wife and I both got tested. She had an incredible background. North American First Nations, South American, Portugal and all over Europe. It was so cool, when I got mine back it said, you're Scottish mate. Edit. In no way did I mean to imply I was unhappy with my results. I just found it hilarious if you compared the findings. I actually found out I had the cancer gene from one of these tests, BRCA1, and my whole family was tested as well. 
my sister, brother and dad all have it too. We now get preventative cancer testing but who knows it could have very well saved one of our lives down the road. Not really horror story overall, but when I first found out it was extremely scary as I was just expecting to get some entertaining report back and instead found out I had a serious health condition. I'm adopted and was hoping to find out family info and hopefully who my birth parents were. Found out my birth father sexually abused the kids of one of his girlfriends and is currently serving 45 years. Also he committed multiple armed robberies in the past. On top of that he's into a bunch of weird Africans or the real Native Americans beliefs that he's using to try and get out of prison. Not sure he actually believes all of it but he did a DNA test in the first place to try and claim to be native. That whole side of my gene pool is into weird religious stuff. Plus the guy he thought was his father isn't. His mom had an affair and his real dad, my grandfather had recently also just got out of prison for attempted murder then died from Covid. Pretty sure he was in the drug trade in Miami in the 80s as well. Safe to say I want zero contact from anyone on that side. My other half is native and the horror stories are just all the teens they went through in residential schools and literally being moved to Indian territory and being given the last name orphan because all their family died. Also my birth mother was basically stolen from her family and given to a white family and none of her siblings even know she exists. I am beyond lucky I didn't have to grow up in any of that environment. My kid took the test, and eight years later, introduced me to a half-sister I never knew I had. My father had remarried and had a son I knew about, but this younger sister took us both by surprise. And the father in all this has passed on, so. I got a sister now. My sweetie's mother had an affair after kid number two and ended up pregnant with number three. His dad, mother's husband, didn't bond with him the way he did with the older siblings, or the three from his previous relationship, for that reason. It was quite obvious as he got older, too, being blonde, blue-eyed, skinny, and a high academic achiever versus being overweight with dark hair, brown eyes, and not so academic like his five older siblings. Dad died 15 years ago and never had a good relationship with my hubby because he didn't care to invest much in a kid that wasn't his. Last December during my pregnancy, we decided it was time for him to do 23 and May so he could have some proof in hand before connecting with his mother's app, alleged bio dad. And it's a damn good thing he did. Turns out that his sibling's dad was actually his real dad this whole time. Genetics are just kind of a crapshoot sometime and the affair was total a red herring. Found out that my ex-girlfriend was actually my cousin. In college I became a DJ at the student radio station and ended up meeting her through that. We became close friends almost instantly, and after a few months she built up the courage to ask me out. When we started seriously talking and learning about each other, we kept finding more and more things we had in common. She was born in the same small town, approximately 4k people, as my grandmother and her middle name is my grandmother's name. Wow, cool coincidence. We both have a family history of BPD and Raynaud's. Hey, we'll know how to take care of each other. Laying our arms next to each other they looked nearly identical. It's like we were made for each other. After about a month of talking she invited me to her apartment to cuddle and talk while she did some schoolwork. Things got heated and we were making out when we both had this moment of shared deja vu like this had happened before. We made out some more but didn't do anything further before she had to leave to pick up her roommate. The next day she blew up on me over text, blocked me on everything, basically just gone from my life and I was so hurt and confused because I really liked her, but she'd been pretty inconsistent, BPD, and it ended up for the best. A few months later and I'm talking to my uncle before Christmas dinner. He's a big genealogy nerd and has hundreds of years of our family tree plotted out on ancestry. When I joined the conversation he was talking about a gravesite he visited from some relative in the 1700s. At this point I'm not really paying attention and just sipping my drink while everyone else talks, but eventually he started talking about my grandmother and her siblings. I'm learning about my great aunt and suddenly I feel sick because it all slides into place. My great aunt is my ex's grandmother. My ex is named after my grandmother, who is her grandmother's sister. We have the same bone structure and our families have the same predisposed medical conditions because they're the same family. I haven't contacted her to tell her, 
because how do you tell someone that kind of news? Hey, you know how we were dating and almost had sex. Well I'm glad we didn't because you're my cousin haha. -ha. And I'm absolutely never telling my family because it just feels like the kind of thing I should take to the grave. But hey, Reddit can know. TLDR. My grandmother and my ex-girlfriend's grandmother were sisters. Not a horror story, but certainly unexpected. My sister did 23 and May and matched with a niece. Apparently my brother 40 meters, unbeknownst to him, has a daughter. From her age we can tell she must have been born when my brother was in was in high school. The bio mom must have given her up for adoption without telling my brother. No bad feelings, they would have been so young, like 15 years old, so it was for the best. My mother was one of seven children of an abusive mother and beloved father. 20 grandchildren, my cousins, my brother and me. Through testing some cousins have determined that at least three of the seven children were not the biological offspring of my grandmother's husband. We aren't telling all the other cousins until the last uncle dies, he's 93. Summary. Got their parents arrested for murder. It's not my story but one known around Ireland. In the 1980s, a dead baby was found on a beach in South Kerry. It had been stabbed many, many times. A massive investigation occurred, and there were appeals for the mother to come forward. In Ireland's dark past, we have treated women and especially unmarried mothers terribly. A woman on the opposite side of the county was wrongly accused of killing the baby and dumping it three hours away. She had given birth to a baby who was stillborn, which they buried on their farmland. Her family was coerced into signing false confessions by our police force that she had killed the baby in South Kerry, even though she did not. Fast forward to 2022, there was suddenly a middle-aged married couple from South Kerry who were arrested on suspicion of killing the baby. Their child, who was in their 20s, submitted their DNA to an ancestry site. They got hits, and one of them was for murdered baby found on the beach. They haven't been convicted, the trial hasn't happened yet. I'm the product of R asterisk P and my mom was pregnant with me when she met my dad. My biological father is dead but I have a bunch of half-siblings who are pretty cool now. I am estranged from my family of origin, they disowned me because I'm gay. So I don't know if they know, or if they always knew. Turns out one of my half-siblings is also gay and their parents are super supportive and threw a coming out party. Weird how stuff works out. I worked in healthcare. I have heard so many NPE stories, non-parental events, basically discovering unexpected parents and or relatives in your family tree. A pro tip for parents and or family who are still hiding genetic secrets. The era of being able to hide these things has been over for a very, very long time. I strongly suggest you come clean on your own terms before your child or relatives inevitably find out through a DNA test, and nowadays it's not a matter of if, it's when. Person shrugging. I did ancestry DNA a few years ago. Found out my father sexually assaulted over 50 women. My mom is an orphan. Did the test. Discovered she's a fifth generation orphan on the maternal side, yes. Her, her mom, her mom, her mom, and her mom's mom. All orphans. Her maternal side grandfather went to prison for five years for arson when he was caught burning his house down for insurance money in the Great Depression in the 1930s. Her paternal side revealed her grandpa was murdered on a bridge over a river in Kentucky smuggling whiskey in the Prohibition. His murderer served only four years in prison and it is still a case precedent in Kentucky's Court of Appeals. Both of these stories, events happened within five years of each other and one state apart. This all makes sense if you knew my mom. She stabbed my dad in the heart with a fork and then tried to run him over with her dodge dart demon in the 70s. And now all the crazy shit I've done in my life suddenly makes sense. Genetics. All my life, I was told my maternal great-grandfather was one half Cherokee. He had blue-black hair, tawny skin and sky-high cheekbones. Even in his 89s his hair was grey, not white. On my father's side, there was a take where one of the sons took an African woman as his wife. My result 97% Irish, Scotch and English, 2.3% Scandinavian. I'm so white, I glow in the dark. The remaining 0.7% was inconclusive. 
one of my cousins was not really my cousin. My cousin died in Vietnam and this guy that was in his platoon or whatever took his identity. Edit. This happened years ago and the cousin is much older than me. After some clarification from older relatives, it was my cousin that disappeared and took someone's identity. He was then located by a DNA test his kids took and was reunited with our family. Lucky us. One of my great uncles got contacted by a woman who said he was her father after she took a test through one of those sites. He denied it vehemently and it caused some strife in the family until it was revealed that it was actually his older brother who was the father. Turns out he was kind of a cad in his youth and never found out until now. Not a horror story, but the opposite. My mom always told me my father wasn't my biological father. I hated her for telling me and didn't want to believe it. A few years after I did 23 and May, I checked my shared DNA list and saw a cousin I was close to from my paternal side. I was so relieved and happy and thankful I never told anyone what my mom told me. We always knew my grandma had my dad before she got married but through ancestry we found out she actually had another baby, after my dad but before she got married, different dads. Not via 23 and me or anything like that, but after my grandmother passed away my mum found some documents which led her to believe that grandma might have given a child up for adoption. She spent quite a bit of time and effort investigating and eventually confirmed her suspicion and tracked her half-brother down living in another state. As often happens though, they had very little in common. He'd had a pretty rough childhood and compensated for that via alcohol. However, he latched on to the idea of a new family pretty hard and now mum gets to enjoy semi-regular drunken phone calls from her half-brother. Found out that I'm married to my cousin. 